many times in the last few months, we have been in the media to talk about the urgent threats that pay uh, face America, things like bird flu or food safety issues, but we also have urgent realities, the kinds of problems that affect people's lives every single day that are already here and already among us, and one of those urgent realities is chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a serious illness. It's a real illness that's affecting at least a million Americans. So what we want to have accomplished with this campaign is for, first of all, patients to seek help, for clinicians to diagnose the disease, and for patients to really receive the care that they need and deserve. We've documented, as have others, that the level of functional impairment in people who suffer from CFS is comparable to multiple sclerosis, AIDS, end-stage renal failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The disability is equivalent to that of some well-known, very severe medical conditions. We found that CFS follows a pattern of remitting and relapsing symptoms, that symptoms can change over time, and that spontaneous recovery is rare. We also found that patients who get appropriate care early in their illness have a significantly better long-term health outcome than those who do not. Again, this underscores the importance for this campaign. The bad news is we still don't know what causes it or how to treat it successfully. But the good news is that there are now over 4,000 published studies that show underlying biological abnormalities in patients with this illness. It's not an illness that people can simply imagine that they have, and it's not a psychological illness. In my view, that debate, which has raged for 20 years, uh, should now be over. And we can help right now anyone that shows up at a doctor's door that knows something about this illness. There are diagnostic criteria that enable clinicians to diagnose chronic fatigue syndrome in the primary care setting. But given the fact that less than 20% of the patients that have this illness actually carry the diagnosis, have been to their doctors and been diagnosed, it's clear we have a long, long way to go. There are uh, effective treatment strategies that the clinicians can use to help our patients right now. And although there's no single treatment, no magic bullet that fixes the illness, that goes to the core of the illness, there are treatments that do help and, and help significantly. They help in uh, treating the symptoms, increasing the function of the patients, and allowing patients to engage in normal activities of daily living. It's critical for their patients and their health care providers to know that there is hope and that we can help. It's incredibly important to the patient community to feel validated by our government health agencies. When I was sick, it was a time when there was a lot of disbelief, and that lack of, of credibility made it hard to get effective care. It made it hard to get support from you know, family members and friends. So the fact that there is now an increased acceptance and acknowledgement that this illness is real is really significant. I thank you all for joining us today. This event is a real milestone in the life of every chronic fatigue syndrome patient, and it marks what we hope will be a turning point in the public's recognition of the severity and complexity of CFS, and in the ability for healthcare professionals to diagnose it and care for people with it. The CFITS Association spent its first dollar on research nearly 20 years ago and is now the largest source of CFS research funding aside from the federal government. We're proud to lead national efforts in education, awareness, public policy, and research, and we're grateful to those who support our vital efforts and for the partnership of the CDC, the HHS, and the NIH in this important work. It focuses, I hope, all of us on not just 
the very real need to make people aware of chronic fatigue syndrome, but on the fact that we need to redouble our efforts to learn more about this condition and about research. expressed in patients with this illness. Dr. Klimas and other investigators have shown that different cells within the, within the immune system are abnormal either in number or their... To recognize and report immune system abnormalities in CF... ...to public health, and I believe that the approach that we've done will not only have ramifications for CFS, but it has ramifications for other illnesses as well. ...that we worked on with a group of researchers in Australia, led by Dr. Andrew Lloyd at the University of New South Wales. We have genomic data from this group of patients, and so we are in the process of looking at their gene expression. The worst part isn't always waking up exhausted with legs that feel like lead or that my memory is shot and every muscle in my body is screaming. The worst part isn't even that everyone thinks the problem's in my head. The worst part of chronic fatigue syndrome is missing my life. CFS affects more than one million Americans. Get informed, get diagnosed, get help.